This podcast is a part of the Podmania Podcasting Network. Check out podmania.co.uk to check out more of our great podcasts, features, reviews, match ratings and previews spanning the crazy and diverse world of professional wrestling. Hello, my name is Simon Miller from What Culture Wrestling and you are listening to the Podmania Pro Wrestling Podcast and you better keep listening to it. Why? Here's why. You're listening to the Podmania Pro Wrestling Podcast, a sample of the best pro wrestling podcasts we can produce on our tiny budget. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, CastBox, and all other podcast platforms. If it's wrestling you want, check out more of our great content at podmania.co.uk. Let's do this. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Podmania podcast. I'm your host, Rob Gordon. I'm joined by the Tank Abbott of Podmania. It is Chris O'Brien. Chris, how are you? I'm not exactly with Tank Abbott, because if we just look at like pure numbers, I'm pretty sure I'm the most listened to person on this network. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying that because you spread yourself so thin across every single podcast that we do, you are the most listened to? Oh. I'm just fine, because it started out with the Young Lion, and that started out drawing you guys. Well... No, it's, like, it, it's actually because you were doing Impact. When you when you sh- shifted to Impact, then I started out doing it, because New Japan was up. And then I came on to the thing, and now we're doing the cast, me and you, and that's doing pretty well as well. It is. It <laughs> is doing very well. It is doing very well. Um, I, I apologise for the comparison to Tank Abbott, but the more I thought, thought about it, the more... You look that character you created for UFC three looked a little bit like Tank Abbott with hair, so you know no, I just he, thought it went with it. He has the fucking um, Mandarin beard, <laughs> the actual proper Mandarin beard from the from the car, from the comics, or the shitty Mandarin from that really I, ill fated sequel. It's funny because I'm watching through the MCU films now. Well, I wasn't going to, but then I got really drunk last week and was really hungover on Sunday. So I just watched all of Phase One of Marvel in one day. That's and a that's a lot of films. That's um, six films, so twelve hours of my day, give or take. And it, it's the first Thor film as well, which even though it's only two hours long, it feels like a day. Oh, I don't mind the first four film. Um, like, I actually have the ratings on my whiteboard because I'm keeping the line chart. Uh, oh, God, those fucking line charts. And uh, the only one that broke um, into great, I think anything eight or above is great, is Avengers. But like everything else is solid, apart from Hulk. Hulk is a hard watch, apart from um, the guy from Fight Club, who I now know is the guy from Fight Club because I saw Fight Club. And... Um, yeah, he's in it. And he does a decent job as Banner, but like I think Ruffalo brings something different. And then his love interest in that is just fucking awful. We're talking about Edward Norton, right? Yeah, Edward Norton. And then whoever played his love interest is absolutely fucking awful. I've, I've seen I've seen it once, and that was in... No, I haven't. Sorry, I've seen it twice, but the first time I was hammered. So, you know, I, I, I remember very little about it. Is this the one with... Um, Abomination. Yeah, and it's not really built up all that much, and the acting is awful, and the direction is not all that good, and the cinematography is not all that interesting. It's a bad film, Rob. And the thing is, I still have... Because that's why I bring up, because my next film is Iron Man 3, and that's why I'm sort of putting it off, because I don't remember liking it very much. Iron Man 3 but, is absolutely atrocious. But also, I remember hating Iron Man 2, and upon rewatch, I don't think it's that bad. Iron Man 2. I mean, Iron Man 1 is great. I I will defend that film to the hilt. I think it's an absolutely amazing film. Um, Iron Man 2 isn't bad. It's just that Mickey Rourke cannot do a Russian accent, or he can't do it consistently. Yeah. And like yeah, once you've heard him say Bert and not Bird, <laughs> it really <laughs> takes you out of the rest of it. I want my Bert. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. Okay, I did not earn any from Sesame Street within this film. <laughs> exactly. Bert? Bert? Shut the fuck up, Mickey. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's let's get off the 
the whole Marvel thing. Uh, we are here to do something that's relatively new. In fact, very new. This will be the first WXW show I've seen. Um, but on the 14th, 15th of August, the WWE Network started doing what they promised to do what feels like about nine years ago uh, in putting some independent content onto the network, which included ICW, Progress, WXW, and Evolve. Um, a couple of people were disappointed because it was only stuff that featured wwe superstars i mean what what did you expect they weren't going to pound every single independent show straight onto the network without overdoing it with their quality and their you know tidying it up to a network standard um but we're going to be doing wxw ambition 11 um we're going to go through that in a minute we'll so gives you loads of time to find it on the network sort of welcome to the independence Find that, load it up, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But in the meantime, I know that you, Chris, wanted to talk about the two shows that happened as we record on Saturday and Sunday in NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam. So very quickly, uh, Saturday 22nd of August, we had NXT TakeOver 30 from Full Sail University. Chris, what were your overall thoughts of the show any matches that stood out for the right or the wrong reasons what were your overall thoughts buddy can i be controversial um seeing what we were both chatting about in the group chat i can't see that it's going to be that controversial with what i think okay i think it's the worst takeover I just think it is. There's nothing special. The closest to a great match from there is Balor versus Fatsy, but that ending was complete wank. The latter match was just sort of trying to be New Orleans, but instead we now know that they're looking dreams a bit of sex past. Um, Pat, um, Pat McAfee versus Adam Cole. It was a carry job, and the fact that so many people can't see that it was a carry job means that Adam Cole did a really good job. Um, but you could talk like um, if you've like been watching wrestling for as long as we have, and if you watch as much wrestling as we do, you can kind of see where, um, like, the jump into the crowd spot, any fucking can do that shit like that, and it, it, it's probably the best match on the card, which is not good. And then you have <laughs> um, Dakota Kai versus Ishii, which was fine but a bit sloppy at points like I'm, actually I take it back that's probably that or the Thatcher match is probably my favourite McCann but it's still not great and then that main event drags how long was that main event that main event was a shade over 20 minutes oh I thought it was a shade over 20 fucking years because <laughs> oh my god we now know that um, Cross separated his shoulder so that somewhat goes away to explain it but at that point you're not beholden to any sort of pay per view just cut it short Overall, I didn't think it was the worst takeover ever. Um, you know, you look at some of those early oh, ones. There's some fucking absolute. There's oh, some absolute clusterfucks. I, I have a special place in my heart for those <laughs> old ones. Um, overall, it it wasn't a good show. Um, I have done a review on from the vault reviews dot com. If you want to go and check that out, but overall, I thought it was a very meh show i didn't think it was i didn't think it was special enough to be classed as a 30th take anniversary takeover or a 30th you know celebration of a takeover certainly not 30 years of nxt which is what natalia put on instagram um <laughs> yeah God, she's fucking she's, she's so stupid how is she a heart <laughs> um but uh, i agree with you i think I actually quite enjoyed the Io Shirai and Dakota Kai match. Um, I haven't been enamoured with Dakota Kai's heel run at all, um, but this was actually probably the best I've seen her. Um, Shirai was great because Shirai is great. Um, Thatcher and Balor, I thought was really, really good. Um, Good, solid opener. I just thought for all the work that Thatcher did on Balor's leg, like fucking relentless. Um, For Balor to then win it with a fucking coup de grace, from the top rope and still do his stomps and things like that. Like he sold it really, really well up until that closing stretch, and the closing stretch sort of took it out for me. It's the Kentami Hara finish where it's like you've been kind of selling this for the whole match, and then suddenly your arm works. Yeah, exactly. So it took me out of it a bit, but um, the ladder match it wasn't bad, um, but it wasn't a touch on you know New Orleans or anything like that. And I think because NXT. Have, went through a space, especially early on, 
in this year, during this year. Um, they had so many ladder matches that <laughs> I'm just, I'm not bothered about NXT ladder matches. I don't care if I don't see one for the next year. Um, I thought Cameron Grimes was great. I thought Bronson Reed looks like a star. Um, and Damian Priest was a worthy winner, I think, after his match with Balor at TakeOver in Your House. I think, for me, it was pretty obvious that he was winning. Uh, he's the next one to strap a rocket to. Um, Pat McAfee, considering that as his first professional wrestling match, and then you compare him to someone like Mongo McMichael, I think he deserves all the praise he gets. Um, because he, in his first match, and yes, I am fully aware he was working with Adam Cole, um, but even so... I'm I still think he did, he did a, a very good job. No, I, I know you're not saying he did a bad job. I know you're saying it does help that he's in with someone like Adam Cole. Of course it does. Um, and, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a barnstormer. I think I gave it seven. But considering it is his first match, he'd got he'd got the psychology. You know, he'd you know he knew how to work the match. It wasn't just a case of right. I've done a move now. Move into position. You know, there was still bits of clunkiness there. Of course there was. It was his first professional wrestling match. Um, but overall, I was really, really impressed with him, as I was with Dominic Mysterio um, the next night. The main event is the worst main event that I have seen in NXT TakeOver history. Now, I will, hands up, I haven't seen all the NXT TakeOvers. I think I'm, I'm haven't seen many before San Antonio. So take from that what you will. But this was, <clears throat> it was 20 minutes. We have never had Karrion Cross go in a match more than eight minutes. Why the hell would you make him go? His entire character is shock value. You do not make him go 20 plus minutes. And I don't exactly know where the shoulder injury took place. Um, I think it was relatively early on from what I can gather. Um, and absolute fair play to Karrion Cross for, you know, carrying on. But, you know, even Keith Lee just felt really, really fucking flat in this match. The th punches they were throwing at times were embarrassing. You know, they were missing. They just they, they just seemed to be... Th they seemed to lose complete doubt. And I say this in my review. It seems to be a match of three parts. You've got the first part where it is very, very clear that they have a game plan. Karrion Cross is working Keith Lee's arm, and that first five, six minutes is great. Now, if this was a 10-minute match, that would be fine. That would be a seven-star match. You know, we've got good storytelling, and Keith Lee did a damn sight better in that set seven minutes selling the arm than uh, Balor did selling the leg. But after that, and I don't know whether it was the shoulder injury or what it was, but the match meandered with no direction at all. No direction. There didn't seem to be any sort of idea of where to go next, what to do. We seem to be doing things for the sake of doing them. And, you know, yeah, Karrion Cross was injured. And yes, he didn't exactly cover himself with glory in this match. But Keith Lee, who I am a huge fan of before I have people in the comments tell me how much I don't like Keith Lee. I love <coughs> Keith Lee. After Survivor Series, he was the most over person in the fucking company. I just did not like this match. I... I was listening, and I know you hate him. I listened to Jim Cornette talking about this match on his drive through podcast, because that's the one where he does all the questions, and he's not quite as much of a prick. And he just said it looked like just a huge clash of styles. And I think that's probably what it was. Because if they'd have just done like a Hoss match, which is what I thought we were going to get, I think we could have had a really, really good match. I just don't think this worked for anyone. It was a really, really sour way to end the takeover. And you're right, Chris, we are used to, we've been spoiled so much with having these iconic takeovers of re, of just with legendary matches taken. I mean, look at New York. We had two damn near perfect matches in Colin Gargano and Walter versus Pete Dunne. And then here, what, what was that iconic match? You know, I mean, we were kind in the takeover in your house show. You know, because you had Balor versus Priest, which was good, really good. Um, Lee versus Gargano, which was good. I know you didn't quite enjoy it as much as I did, but was good. You know, bordering on great. And then you had the women's main event, which was good, but nothing was fantastic there. But the problem was here, everything was much of a muchness. And t 
we've sort of come to expect a little bit more from takeovers now. Yeah, it was so like it was almost standard. It was like autopilot. It was like a takeover and autopilot. It's like here's your um, match between the two work rate gods in Balor and Thatcher. Here's your um, indie-rific ladder match. Here's your um, big main event. Here's your and then like with a bit of WWE bollocks with the Pat McAfee getting in there, which I don't know how much that would have brought really. Like, and but again, that's probably one of the better parts of the night. Yeah, it was. It wasn't bad, and and it, and like I I'm reluctant to call it awful because NXT fans are the fucking worst. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was fine. I I was drunk when I watched it. I want to rewatched it. I everything fell apart again. So yeah, it it was a little bit disappointing. Um, the Pat McAfee thing I, that could have main evented an NXT TV show I, I don't think it should have been a takeover match i, I don't want to see celebrities in nxt that's not what nxt is that put them on the main roster that seems to be a main roster thing I, I, it does not feel like an nxt thing and for fuck's sake you've got your <laughs> the longest reigning nxt champion in history why the going fuck NXT, exactly going. going 50 50 with pat mccarthy are you are you taking the piss i mean it, come on it's like if fucking um, CM Punk, having just come from WWE, went into UFC and went five rounds of Conor McGregor. Yeah, exactly. It just, it didn't feel... <sighs> Let's talk about SummerSlam, because there's a there's a direct parallel I want to take. Um, overall, Chris, now you've watched SummerSlam now. Um, I'd watched it beforehand and told you it was a good show. I re- I actually really enjoyed SummerSlam, aside from the last match. Um, what were your opinions on it? I, I didn't hate it. I didn't watch all of it, I should say. I skipped Mandy versus Sonya. And I kind of just jumped to my points of interest. I, what, I, I watched the Dominic versus Seth match without watching it, if you get me, like it was on in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, but the two after matches were really good. Warner Sasha was great. Um, that's not really all I have to say with SummerSlam. Like, that, that was great. Everything else was fine. Nothing offended me. But, like, nothing stands out. I don't watch WWE. I don't have a massive grasp of what the storylines are because I don't even watch them. I'm basically in for a pay-per-view. It's, I have the relationship with WWE. A lot of people have, like, New Japan. And so I, I literally cannot tell you. Mm. Um, my thoughts on when it comes to story, but in terms of the actual show, yeah, sorry, ev- everything was everything that I watched was good to great, and the only real thing that stands out to me is Sasha versus Asuka. Completely agree with you. I thought both women's matches were great. Sonia Mandy was actually surprisingly good. Um, I don't think anyone expected that, though. Mandy. Struggling to get a table up was hilarious. Um, so if you haven't seen that gift, please go and check that out. If, you know, where she can't get the table up. Um, I thought the Dominic versus Seth, my sister parallel, wanted to draw with the Pat McCarthy match. Dominic did exactly what he should have done. He got a couple of hope spots in, but Seth toyed with him. And Seth was absolutely fucking great here. Just absolutely vicious as fuck. At one point, he was going to beat up Ray's wife. Just, just making him a proper hateable, detestable heel. And Dominic, considering this is his first pro match, fucking hell, he was great. He was, and he takes those shots like an absolute fucking champ because he got absolutely basted with that kendo stick. I mean, he gave as good as he got. Um, but yeah, Rey Mysterio thought was great. Rey really added that lovely drama. Um, there was certainly a dramatic element that it added that they weren't allowing Ray into the ring and Dominic was saying, no, Dad, I don't want you in. I need to do this on my own. thought that was great. Overall, really enjoyed it. I was a little... <laughs> Listen, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to enjoy a Braun Strowman Bray Wyatt match. You know, it's very plodding. It's very slow. Um, and the Fiends gimmick, obviously, is, you know, it's not about five-star classics, is it? Um I mean, a great match with, uh, with Brian at the Rumble. So. He had a very good match with Daniel Bryan um, at the Rumble. I would argue his best match of his run so far. I mean, that's not why I <laughs> like the Fiend. To be honest, I'm not. I'm not watching him thinking, "Oh, I can't wait for a Matt Wrestling Classic with Bray Wyatt." That's not why I like him. Um, 
I'm very excited to see what they do with Roman Reigns, who they seem to have brought back as a heel, which <laughs> you I don't understand. <laughs> Attacking a fiend and a monster among men, yeah. <laughs> Great heel move. I don't understand, but they, you know, he's not in his body armor, and, you know, the further they can shift him away from the shield and actually give him his own persona, you know, the guy's money. I'm so, I know there are people that hate Roman Reigns, you know, I've never hated Roman Reigns. I've hated the way he was pushed, which isn't his fault, and the creative direction he's been given has been fucking dross, but, you know, the guy is money. He can talk. How his promos have improved is fucking unreal. He's got a great look. He delivers good matches. And if you say he doesn't, you're wrong. I'm sorry. He does. Um, and if this is the heel route they're going, which they're about three years late on, um, I'm very excited to see what happens with that. I'm excited to see where they're going to go at Payback, which is a week after fucking SummerSlam. Um, because that main event is Braun versus Bray versus Roman. So I, I do not understand that, how they're going to do that and still make Roman look strong. And it's the WWE, so I don't exactly have the, the biggest amount of confidence in it. But yeah, overall, I thought SummerSlam was a decent show. It's probably, depressingly, the best show post-Mania and... I think, aside from the Rumble, it's the best show so far, WWE-wise. Yeah, um, but like, I don't know, it's like saying, but the tastiest pile of shit. <laughs> Chlamydia is the best sexually transmitted disease to have. Um, <laughs> anyway, we've been talking a lot um, about the stuff that we aren't actually talking about today, or not supposed to be talking about, so... Let's shift gears and let's talk about WXW, um, a German promotion. Um, I'm not massively familiar with it. I know, Chris, when I throw to you in a couple of minutes, you've got um, bits to say. And I know you watched their 16 carat tournament earlier this year, I think. Um, it was in March. In March. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um but what we're looking at today, as I said before, is the Ambition Tournament, which is an eight-man tournament, which features some of the best technical wrestlers in the world. It's a single-day elimination tournament um, with submissions and knockouts as the only way to win. Um, Chris, is there anything you want to say about Westside Extreme Wrestling or the Ambition Tournament as a whole? Uh, BXV. Um, Ambition's a side show for WXW as far as I know. Like, when they're holding a big show, they have an Ambition show as sort of a bonus. Like, um, while 16 carats going on, like, after hours in a smaller venue, we'll tend to have Ambition. And, yeah, that's basically what it is. It's just a mini tournament between people who, in the big, in 16 carats case, it's people who either got knocked out or aren't in the tournament. Um, because it happened well, this year happened just before day two, and in this case, this is uh, in Canada. Um, and I know this because it's the same venue as Progress Canada was in, it was a double promotion show. That's what WXW seems to do, they seem to do a lot of like wrestle festivals where like WXW is the main thing, but like then you have little things going on around it, and yeah, like in terms of this, I, I in terms of my rationale for picking this, like. You and Garth pick bad things, and I want to pick good things that might educate you about the wider world of wrestling. But I said before, when we were offline, it's so much fun. So yeah. much fun to do a wank pay-per-view. Yes, but also, I every so often I want to open a cold one of the boys, and I'm having trouble opening a cold one. <laughs> I cannot. There we go. It's open. <laughs> didn't quite go as smoothly as you anticipated, did it? That <laughs> cold one of the boys and watching good bloody wrestling. Right. Well, we better hope that this is better than the TNA Hard Justice pay per view that Garth made us watch a couple of weeks ago. So, hopefully, you've all got WXW Ambition Eleven. Ironically, the eleventh installment of Ambition. Believe it or not, um, from August eighth, two thousand and nineteen. Um, and we'll get it open in three. Sorry, we'll press play in three, <laughs> two, two one, 
and go. I thought it was Shawn Michaels then. I oh, know. WXW's played. I've got said for a stat it. Um, previous winners of this include Timothy Thatcher, Zack Sabre Jr., Matt Riddle, and Brian Danielson, who is the winner of the first ever Ambition Tournament. Do you want to know who else has won it? Who? Alexander Wolf. Yeah, you know who else won it? Daniel Maccabee. <laughs> oh, here we go. This is a. These are people who have won it or have been in it. I was just going to say, that's Drew Gulak. Yeah, uh, Biff Buzik at the time, that's Tommy End. Oh, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Walter. Oh. Josh Barnett. That's Josh Barnett. <laughs> I didn't know Josh Barnett was in. Speedball My Bailey. Shingo Eerie. I can't say his name properly. No, I was just going to say, I couldn't, I couldn't say it properly either. So there's no Shingo time Eerie. limits, no DQs. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's basically, it's a shoot. Have you ever watched? Have you watched um, Josh Barnett's Bloodsport? I have watched Josh Barnett's Bloodsport. It's a, it's a bit like that. Can we just appreciate the really, his... really baby-faced uh, Zack Sabre Junior? By the way, sorry. <laughs> yeah, like watching old Zack Sabre Junior is always weird. Ambition and left. Yeah, ambition. I can't do a German. Can you do a German accent? I cannot do a German accent. My friend Hannah can do a really good German accent and it annoys me. Who can do a really good German accent? Um, my friend Hannah. Oh, okay. Oh, this is... Yes, this is WXW's first foray, isn't it, into North America, apparently, and they are in Canada, I believe? Hence the maple Look, leaf on the logo? Yeah, they're in Canada because... Progress, can't, Progress and WXW sort of co-promoted with um, Smash, I believe, in Canada. <laughs> yes, because didn't you watch the Progress Toronto show? Yeah, I did last year. It was really good, actually. Um, I can recommend... I can definitely recommend Paul Robertson versus Walter, Travis Banks... Actually, not Travis Banks versus John Devon, the both nonsense. Um Fuck Travis Banks. <laughs> And possibly fuck your devil, and that one's a bit less cut and dry. Uh, we still don't know about. Oh, I just, I don't want to talk about this. Me neither. Although I don't think there's anyone who got muted in this one, so I think we're fine. Yeah, Jack Gallagher doesn't turn up, does he? <laughs> no, Imagine. This, is, oh, this is last year. And you can tell it's a progress show. If you're not a progress show, it's all the. Um, oh. Also, fuck Jack Gallagher, by the way. Yeah, definitely. Actually, don't he'll like it. Mm. I love that it is just. It looks like just a a nice little ballroom where you'd have a fortieth wedding anniversary. <laughs> the night before, some couple shared their first dance. <laughs> Someone had sex in that fire exit. <laughs> Someone had their first fuck. <laughs> I mean, we probably should be listening to the guy. I think that's a Smash... Isn't that a Smash Wrestling microphone anyway? Yeah, okay, so it is Smash. Yeah. It's Smash Progress and WXW. To be fair, um, Smash is also on the Progress Network. So. I, I don't have the Progress Network. To, um, to be fair, my... there might not be much point having it anyway soon, by the sounds of it, especially if they're going to put everything on here anyway. Yeah... Arthur, it doesn't sound like we're overly deserving of money right now. Well, no. So James versus Thatcher. Who is, I'll, I'll who is James? People, um, I'll throw you on people you don't know. As you go. Obviously, you no know, Timothy go Thatcher. On. We've just spoken about Timothy Thatcher in our very, very quick NXT TakeOver 30 thoughts. How much Thatcher have you seen? Say again? How much Thatcher have you seen? Well... When he first came into the company, I'd seen one match, and it was on YouTube, and I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. But then when I realized he was part of Ring Camp, um, I watched a couple of just indie matches that were randomly on YouTube with him in. I think one of them might have been Progress. In fact, I think both might have been Progress. Um, Maybe. Have you seen this match with Walter in Progress? No, that was the one I was looking for. Um, that's hard to find. I'll see if I can link you. It's fucking great. Um, Walter chops Thatcher's head. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. 
oh, okay, the entire was- show isn't going to be blue. That's nice. Because yeah, <laughs> I felt um, like I was in the inside of a fucking fridge. Alexander James is from Hartford, Maryland. <laughs> You're just reading is- all their Wikipedia entries. Um, okay, um, he's well known for CZW, which explains why I know nothing about. Ah. Uh. Um, MCW, he's worked for. Uh, OWE. Yeah, he's American indie, so we're not, we're likely not to know much about him. So I don't feel too bad. He what looks like it? Drew Gulak and Timothy Thatcher had a baby. Does Alexander James? That would be a very technically proficient baby. <laughs> it would be. It would. Be. Yeah, it would. Um, what do you say? What what's what do I think what about think Timothy of- Thatcher? Yeah, I think he's great. I think he's going to have some absolute bangers in NXT, especially if they do that fight pit again. I think he will get ruined on the main roster. I think he, he is. is I think he is due to be the next Cesaro, someone who is technically outstanding in the ring and someone who is not understood by Vince one bit. If he can stay in NXT, great. I, I'm glad you said not because I love Thatcher. I, I I have something I've been struggling with recently more than ever is like there's a certain superficiality to WWE that I just cannot get over. And um, Thatcher breaks through that, like his matches with Lurkin and Riddle. I completely forgot about because WWE seems to keep you on arm's length. It's weird. Mm. It's hard to explain. But, like I can't get sucked into a WWE show. So there's no commentary oh, so, either, which doesn't help. Um, those com- there's no, they normally have commentary. Maybe it's just because they didn't have the English, they didn't have English commentary in this one, so they didn't want to have German commentary to not turn it off. We'll do the commentary. We'll do the commentary by talking about a man we don't know and Timothy Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, congratulations. Well done, good boys. Good boys. Good show. Jolly good show. Yeah, um, these ma- this, by the way, we, you can probably tell by the amount of matches we need to get through and um, the amount of matches we need to get through and the time left, but like we, these matches don't really go long. I was just going to say, uh, well, it's only an back. hour and 24 minutes, the show as a whole, anyway. Yeah, these matches are meant to like emulate shoot fights, so they don't go long. It's basically they shoot for submissions, they shoot, they shoot for the knockouts. And they tend to be achieved very quickly by people who know what they're doing. If there's no DQs, why is the rope breaks? Because you can't win outside the rope, and when you're holding onto the rope, um, you're outside the ring. There's no fucking room to go outside the ring. Basically, you can hold, you can keep hold of the hold, but you can't. Um, but you can't win. But like you let go basically as an honor system, or because you can't drag him off the rope. Okay. Timothy Thatcher looks like he'd beat up a tramp to get a cigarette butt off the floor. <laughs> he doesn't look like he smokes, to be honest. He looks like he eats a very good diet. He seems like the type of man who eats kale. He looks like Aiden English's big brother. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks like someone, he looks like someone Vince would see and not realise, because he's so skinny, he wouldn't realise that he's a headway. Speaking oh, of Aiden English, I, sorry, have you seen the fucking size? I mean, that fucking hell, those forearms, Jesus. Oh, Thatcher going for an armbar. Guns not having any of it. I think she, with shoot fights, it seems to be, again, a lot like um, MMA, where like if you have a submission in, you're just going to tap. Yeah. Because like in reality, if someone has an armbar on you, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> just randomly sticking his finger up at the crowd earlier on. Lovely. Fucking hell. Slap. Slappity! I, I have a question. Why do you think um, shoot style like this is a banal considering how popular UFC is? Um, I don't think you should have it in a promotion where... So, for example, the issue that I have with Raw Underground, um, I applaud them for doing something different, and I, I actually quite like the idea, but it completely negates what they're doing in the ring. If you're trying to portray this shoot fighting as legitimate fighting, you are leaning into the fact that everything you do in the ring isn't. Um, so if you're going to do, you know, in inverted commas, shoot wrestling, 
then you either have an entire separate brand, an entire separate show, or whatever. I think if you're going to do Raw Underground, for example, you do the last hour as Raw Underground, or the first hour as Raw Underground. Don't just intimate it, you know, throughout the show. Maybe. I kind of, well, last thing, I love Japanese wrestling, especially Noah, which is, as I've been noticing, as I've been watching more of it, um, they incorporate things like this. For example, Kano won the Global Championship off of Nakajima from a walkaway knockout. Oh. So, like, incorporating things like that, but sort of also leaning into the fact that it's wrestling, so you can go long, um, you can sell a submission instead of tapping out straight away. I think that's sort of the best hybrid you can hope for. And stuff like this, but, like, again, this is a sideshow. I'm fine with this being a sideshow. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't watch WXW if it was just this, I think. No. I... I, he's 10 minutes into this show. I was just going to say, what a glowing endorsement. Um, uh, no, but, like, I like this as my sideshow. I wouldn't watch this as my main thing, though. I, I completely agree with you. You know, think I... wonderfully technically proficient as it is... Um, it was like how during Mania weekend do you sort of get sucked into like everything you can get your hands on sometimes mm. it's kind of like that where like during WXW um, 16 Carat weekend I watch everything that's coming out but like other than that I don't but like ooh that was a nice that was a mm. nice elbow ooh that's, that's an ill advice uh, do, do not it, it is a bad news to try and take fat shit to the ground Oh, he's got him a triangle oh, oh, of sorts. Yeah, and also elbowing his own knee. <laughs> I was just going to say, he's, he is literally just forearming his own knee there. <laughs> I think that's the because wrestling is inherently fake, and you, um, inher- it is just fake. So like, Whoa, when you do what? Some- Ooh, that was smooth. That was fucking smooth. That's yeah, why I love there you it. go. Fucking tap. Shit like that is why I love that shit. Thatcher progresses with a single leg Boston Crab. Nice. But again, he, kept, he did go for the leg a few times, so that kind of makes sense. So it's kind of a one piece hand. <laughs> so it's an eight man. So that's the core final. Thatcher's into the semi finals. Yeah. I, th- I don't. I, I never remember. I just go by rounds. It's like round Who's this one, guy? <laughs> Ambition 11. Who have we got now? Uh, Daniel McCabe versus Bobby, Bobby Guns. Guns. Do, you know, do you know either of these people? Um, uh, I know that Bobby Guns was WXW champion for a while. I don't know if he still is. Yeah, he was WXW champion. I think he's also been their shotgun champion. I think that might have been what I thought we was thinking about. Um, I don't. I, I I'm also new to the breaks that we only got into them when sixteen carats. I'm yet to go back a bit history. Daniel McCarvey on the other hand is someone I really like. Okay, talk to me about Daniel McCarvey. He's an England. He's not. He's an American indie dude, but he had this um, trilogy with Timothy Thatcher, which I got recommended. I watched all three matches, and they're great. Um, classics like between eight and nine out of ten. Interesting. Um. But he's also like you'll see his gear and how he and like how he looks and it's sort of like he's doomed to be an indie darling. And I thought that about Kevin Steen back in the day, but like you'll see him and it's like he's doomed to be an indie darling. <laughs> Smoking's cool. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I. I've never smoked, and I don't think I ever. <laughs> uh, it's it's not as good as you think it might be. To be fair, like with Nick, I think I just need an excuse to a go outside because anxiety, and b um, I do know Rob. I hold my li- my wrist quite limply. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I hadn't noticed, but sure. No, yeah, because I remember in Blackpool, you were like, "You're not very masculine, are you?" And then I'm like, "Have you seen how I'm holding my hands?" I don't think I didn't call... I don't think I called you effeminate. You didn't call me effeminate, but, like, you didn't call me masculine. You were I like, mean, you're not extreme. let's be perfectly honest, I'm not exactly the most masculine of blokes. Yeah, I don't know, you're six foot one and you look like you could beat the shit out of me if you wanted to. Oh, mate, I'm a pussycat, trust me. 
I know. I once had some, um, I had someone in the uni. We went out for like we were the biggest all day assessment in uni um, earlier this year, and afterwards, like the whole class just went to wear the spoons for a few, mm-hmm. <laughs> for a few. And it was, it was more than a few. I don't know how I got home. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> the um, someone was like, you know what? When I first saw you, man, I thought you were dead intimidating, and then you opened your mouth. <laughs> That's always nice to hear. Is that a fo- is he yeah. wearing a football top? Yeah. Ah, uh, he I... wears a different fo- he wears a different football top every time. Right, and he is he is going to wrestle in this football top, is he? Yes. Okay. He strikes me as someone who would do well in, like, an old Japan. Explain. Just big size. I mean, we'll we'll see what his style is like here, but, you know, seems to be quite smooth. I imagine he's quite heavy hitting, but that is literally just from his look. Yeah, um, I don't think we'd let him get away with the football top, though. No, no, he needs to sort that shit out. But also, I think it's because his body's not the best. But can I get a singlet? I mean, you look at... There are plenty of wrestlers who aren't in the best shape. I mean, for I, fuck's sake, look I, at Viscera. I mean, yeah, Walter's on this cast. <laughs> he doesn't have a physique. Yeah, I think... Yeah, not every wrestler needs to have six-pack and fantastic pet. That is beautiful, though. Bobby Guns is on yeah. fire here. I think what helps is these two already work like a technical style I don't think um, the guy in the last match did and so, so he sort of had to get dragged through, through with Thatcher mm. just to be fair you're going to get dragged through a technical match I think Thatcher's the right guy to do it you saw he did with Ballard he's not normally technical he's normally like throwing bombs I must admit I am already enjoying this match more than I enjoyed Thatcher versus uh, versus James yeah, this is the... Um, McAvey actually won this last Ambition Tournament during the BX, during 16 Carat Weekend. Beating Chris Ridgway in the final. Okay. I haven't seen it yet, but like, I imagine that was a really good match. I'll give it, a, give it to Euro, probably on the network. Uh, no, I found I found the cop. I, I tracked down the cop. Oh, uh, it's... Um... Are they the Vancouver Whitecaps? I think the football, t- the soccer team. I think that's who he's wearing. I don't. I don't know why I'm asking you. No offense. <laughs> it's like if I asked you about. It's like, oh, is he wearing like um, that from Rings of Akatem from Doctor Who? And you'd be like, the Rings of what now? <laughs> the what of who? Uh, Vancouver Whitecaps. Yes, yes, he is. He's wearing a Vancouver Whitecaps FC football top. Uh, because that makes sense, because they are in Canada. It's, it, but it's a personalised top. It has Maccabee 9 in the back. Yeah, well, I imagine if he's going to do that, he probably has them on every single shirt, doesn't he? Yeah, but like also, if you're going to get a personalised football top, why at that point not just... If you're going to do that for every appearance, why not just get wrestling gear? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Because but... I'm not being funny when I say I think that's literally the biggest thing holding Maccabee back. Because he's great. Like I also saw a match that he had with Gresham, and that was really good as well. He's got a very indie riffic sort of style, hasn't he? Yeah. No, I think he looks like a. Um, I think he he came to prominence through like backyard wrestling, and then he like realised he was actually good. <laughs> that thing Oof. that you aren't actually supposed to do. Yeah. Oh, that's that was lovely. Like, I'm not being funny, this, like, actually feels a bit more like a shoot. Yeah. Like, they're rolling like locks. <laughs> Give us a kiss. Okay, but... Because they're not even, like, holding on to each... They're trying to get, like, fish hooks. No, but those kicks actually look like they're trying to do something rather than him forearming his own knee. Yeah, like, it looks like if this is MMA, they're trying to get points while on the ground. It's like they're fighting over the duvet. <laughs> there are a couple. Yeah. Are you bringing your home life onto the podcast show? Oh, mate, when me and when me and the missus fight over the duvet, it's not a fight. It's a massacre. <laughs> she, 
wins every fucking time. She randomly just grows limbs. It's like, how have you got so many bits of the duvet underneath you? Let's talk about the elephant on Bobby Gunter's arm. <laughs> I've, they've been moving so much, I haven't noticed the elephant. It's either an elephant or a cobra, and I can't work out what it is. Oh, German suplex? That was, cool. that was a fucking lovely German suplex. You're right, he, do, he does look very backyard indie, doesn't he? I, I, now that yeah, you've like, pointed it out, I can't quite get over it. The thing is, he's fucking great. We've seen from this match, don't we? Just from this short burst. Oh. It is an elephant. Sorry, I should be I should be paying attention to the kicks. <laughs> Oof. Oh, he's got him. That has to be it. You reckon? No, I, I don't mean, think like, so. Saw... Oh, no. Oh, no, it's clinched in. It's clinched in. Ah, uh, yeah, I reckon that's it. There we that's go. It. Well done, Mr. Maccabee. Will he come out now in a different football shirt? Ooh, that would be lovely. Did he, I'm trying to remember he was on the pro, he wasn't on the progress shirt. He was on the progress shirt. I'm going to look that up very quickly. Progress Toronto. <laughs> this just came up with a fucking defund the police organization. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto. I'm just going to put in cage match. There is one down, two to go. Oh, looks like he's injured his ear, though. Yeah, um, so that means it, it's not a blind bracket, so next time it, you, you'd be facing Thatcher. Oh, okay. Ooh. Do you know Garcia or Gunderson? I, I know Gunderson. I, I know them vaguely because I think both of them run 16 carat weekend. Okay. Buck Gunderson. <laughs> I'll, I'll double check in a second. Um, he no, looks. He, he looks like a very intense Santino Morella. Stop it! What's your fascination with Santino? <laughs> he looks. Tell me he's not. Tell me he doesn't look like him. He does not. He looks like a very attractive man. <laughs> Are you saying Santino Morella's not an attractive man? Not overtly. Oh, he is. Oh, he is. Oh, but Gunderson does not have a good rating on Gage Match. <laughs> he's a freelancer um, from Canada, so he's a Canadian wrestler, but he has bad reviews. What does it say? What I've seen, but Gunderson, the lad, is an awful wrestler. He has an awful look. He can't really work in the ring, and his promos are quite poor. Look at the type of wrestler that makes, it, um, makes me in the scene look bad. Really bad. But hi. It's not all bad, but at least he has one out of a beard. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> not a ringing endorsement. No. Daniel, Daniel Garcia. Um, he has more favourable views. He's getting like sevens and eights out of that. He's called um, Red he's Death. From he's from Buffalo, New York. He's 21 years old, so I'll put him 20. I wouldn't fuck with him. <laughs> He is the only one so far to have a chant. I wonder why, because there's been... What's the next... Oh, I know the next match is. As in, like, the match after this. I'm not going to lie. Ooh, fucking Ooh. hell. That, that, was, that was nice. That was aggressive. Come on, Buck! Red... Red Death, does that mean um, Buck is a communist? Well, e either that, or... Oh, no, it's the Black Death. It's the plague, isn't it? Never mind. Oh, they put a red cross on the door. That's that's right. Go get him, Santino. <laughs> <laughs> you really want him to keep saying Santino, don't you? <laughs> I mean, uh, Red Death is more over. I imagine Red Death is going through. I mean, that's not... <laughs> someone being over doesn't mean we're going to be booked to win. Oh, I never told you, you know who was on this progress card while we were in Toronto? The Dark Order. Really? Were they Were they the Super Smash Bros? No, we were Dark Order. This is after they debuted at um, Double or Nothing. Ah. But this is before 
this is before Dynamite started, so we were still taking bookings. Because Dynamite started in October. October, yeah, this is August. It's very quick, is Red Death. We've got the triangle locked in straight away. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Buck. Slap. I'm into Red Death right now. I'm, I'm liking the slaps in the triangle. Picking up points in the clinch. I like the fact that they're just bonking him on top of the head. <laughs> it's like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, we've got a full payday for this appearance, so it's like, what, we get to work for five minutes and still get a full fee. Awesome. That was quite cool. Oh, calf crusher. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just an angry wrestler who marked down um, old Buck right here. He's a fan of these open-handed slaps, isn't he? Old Red Death. Yeah. Isn't te- it, um, um, close fist punches illegal in European wrestling? I mean, it's out of stuff, people. I was just <laughs> going to say, you tried telling up, telling off these wrestlers, someone, oh, someone lost a tissue. Oh no! Is, not is someone you. packing? No, there's no it's pinfalls. So weird, it's super weird so far. But the worst match, you know, he's going for a full mount, I think. Um, but the worst match involves Timothy Thatcher. Um, there was a lot of rolling around in that one. Fun. I think that was the issue. Yeah. Whereas this one, this one's like rolling around, but we're rolling into different positions. Yeah. I like a book trying to turn to into the knee bar. <laughs> Maybe if I turn into it more, it won't hurt. Oh, fuck no. He's a professional. He's got a very hairy chest. You know, like shit. He does have a very hairy chest. He's a caveman, isn't he? Not quite as hairy as that bloke from Los Bariquas <laughs> when we uh, did a watch along of SummerSlam 1997 a couple of weeks ago. No, but I'm pretty sure he's the son of Luther from Umbrella Academy. <laughs> oh, my God. And in Zagori. Like you've, I've seen Wilder. Have you? There's been a knockout with like Daniel Bryan's running knee and a Superman punch. Superman punch is very common in, and well, not very common, but somewhat common. Walls of Jericho. I mean, that's a very hard submission to get into. Like, if it was effective and easy to get out of, which it is, um, it's still not the most effective submission you could be going for. Can we just appreciate as well now that Buck Gunderson's straps are down? He's gone full Kurt Angle. Oh, it's actually they're riding a bit low for my taste. <laughs> they are just like trunks now, aren't they? Fucking hell, what a transition yeah. that was. That's oh, tra- oh, yes. My... Oh, Beautiful. Yes. Love that. That was a great. Yeah, very, like, very nice. <laughs> I don't think you can really rate these because they're not like traditional. This is problem I had when I watched Bloodsport. I was like, I don't know how to rate this. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to bother trying to rate these. This is all objectively really good. It's literally just like watching a more dramatic MMA fight. Love that. So really lent back. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Walter versus <laughs> Speedball Mike Bailey. I like that. Have, um, what have you seen as people? Um, uh, bits and bits. And more, he's, I've seen more gifs than actual wrestling yeah. from Old Speedball. I saw him versus El Liguero at a What Culture match, and it's one of the best matches I've seen live, actually. It's really good. Um, you know, he's, the only reason he's not bigger is because he's banned from America for marijuana. For what? Um, drug offences because he tried because he had a bit of weed in his bag. Oh, people! So he can't get. So he can't get into America. But, but he can get into Canada. Japan, which we were... No, he's Canadian. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> why is this? Ent- why is this entrance thing the Korean flag then? Is it? Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't pay attention to the screen. I'm trying to see if anyone has a really smarty shirt in the crowd. Woo! 
Do you know what um, Walter used to be called back in like 2014, 2015? Big Daddy Walter. Big Daddy Walter. I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of not glad he dropped that. I kind of wish he still had that. <laughs> you missed the Big Daddy. I, I, call- I, I wish I could continuously call him Big Daddy. <laughs> Other than that, I have Jay shirt in the crowd. Tony Storm. Um, to, yeah, but to be fair, like, Tony Storm, I'm pretty sure Tony Storm was on one of these shows. So. But the Elite weren't there. No, but like, this is when like AEW was like the international darling. Walter! He dwarfs it. His trunks leave very little to the imagination, though, which is which was unpleasant there briefly. Just had jacket and penis, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Can't complain. <laughs> Oh, daddy will punish you. Oh Christ! Imagine, I feel I feel really sorry for Walter's girlfriend if he's kinky. Because imagine getting spanked. Imagine getting spanked awesome by cave in. <laughs> Jesus, I'm pretty sure that's a thought no one has had until now. No, it's not a thought I want now. To be honest, if someone's got a Joe Coffee shirt in the crowd. A Joe Coffee shirt. Yeah, it's a oh, wolf. He's not wearing. No, I bet that's been burnt. Walter, we just want to see you chop him. Just chop the fucker. That's all we want. But that's when you leave it until later in the match. You you keep you don't go straight for your killing blow. Walter, it's one of those people, like Minoru Suzuki, he, he could have ha- any hairstyle and no one's going to question it. Um, well, that was an ill-advised kick. It was a very ill-advised kick. Miles off. Maybe he's just trying to create distance. Like, he's trying to create distance so he can create a game plan. It's a very small a ring with plan. a very big Walter. Yeah, like, you're just going to have to go for the legs and hope it cuts him down to size. What was the attendance for the... That's the only real the... thing he can go Yeah. What was the attendance so for like, this Chris show, uh, show, Chris? Um, it was. Oh my god! Is there anything more terrifying than a wall to running at you? <laughs> it does not say. But I can tell you what: if you want to look at the attendance, um, the capacity, I can tell you the venue, but it doesn't have the attendance. Nah, just count them. Much of a way. <laughs> I reckon. I think, the, I think. I reckon there's less than hundred people there. But less than two hundred. Less than a hundred. Um. Nah. Depends how that's many are on the hard right? cam side. The last thing, because I'm thinking about um, where my local fed runs, and like the hard cam doesn't show the actual crowd. But, like, we're not exactly going to be going to be outside and mess. No, that is a good oh, shit, point. There was a joke. I told you it was a joke coffee show. It's a wolf. I didn't believe, I didn't believe anyone in Canada brought a joke coffee to you. <laughs> you say, I don't believe you. Why would I lie about that? What an odd thing to lie about. <laughs> to us, stuff like this is what Speedball needs to do here. He needs to try and cut Walter down to size. Like a pepper He can't use his nimbleness. He can't. He can't use his nimbleness because this is shoot style. No, no flippy shit. Oh, he gave up a leg to Walter. You do not give up a limb to Walter. Walter, by the way, at this time, um, both um, NXT UK and Progress Champion. Who is sorry? Walter. Oh. He is um, in the middle of his progress title run, which is one of my favourite title runs of last year, actually. Great match with 10 7. Is that when they merged the Atlas Championship with the uh, Progress Championship? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I like the Proteus Championship, the Championship as a good gimmick. Oh, that's sinister. Speedball's fuck. Um, but I could do miss um, the um, Atlas Championship because it's basically the half championship. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I was just going to say, um, there we go. Oh no, ropes. Oh no, he's on the jungle. 
I'm actually a bit rooting for Speedball a little bit. In the same way that you root for a mouse well, so... that's trying to get away from a cat. Essentially, have you? It's like that you root for. In... It's like Indiana Jones with a boulder could kick the shit out of you. <laughs> that one person is rooting the boulder on. <laughs> you are that one person rooting the boulder <laughs> on right now. Oh, one guy. Hello. Oh, no, he's got to walk all the way around as well. <laughs> oh, that's all. It's... You get that in the show. Ooh, oh. oh, I was about to say that's ill-advised, but managed to stun him long enough. Oh, no. See, but see this is exact... in a shoot-style tournament, this is what this has to be. It needs to be. Um, he gets hope spots, but really, in an actual fight... In a shoot fight, probably, you're probably... backing Walter, aren't you? Yeah, um, there's only a couple. Although, have you ever seen um, Takada versus Andre the Giant? I haven't. So, um. There we go. Is it Takada? Um, Antonio Inoki did not like um, Takada. How come? <laughs> it's Antonio Inoki. Oh, doesn't need a reason. Um, and so he instructed Andre the Giant to shoot on Takada. But Takada kept kicking Andre's legs to the point where Andre couldn't get up. <laughs> Until Andre gets left. Too bad. Takada also did like actually try to cave in Ricky Choshi's head once, so. It's not the greatest act, is it, Walters? Um, no, but also like you say that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not saying to his face, fucking hell. It's two of that. I've been to, um, I say, I've been to a couple indie shows. Um, a progress show and an ICW show he was on, and he's lovely, like behind the merch table. Is he? Like he's. Like, I didn't. I didn't approach him because I, I was still scared. <laughs> um, also, I wasn't going to buy his merch, and I don't want to be that guy who goes and talks to the wrestlers and not buys anything. <laughs> because like I'm not being funny. That's how they make most of their money. <laughs> He's not at the top of the kid life off the boys, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's what makes it worth it, coming up at all this way because he would buy a shirt. Because mm. when you think about 20 quid each price, he would buy a shirt, you'd cover your trip. Yeah. Round two. Yeah. These matches, we've only got three matches left. Oh, we've got, no, we've got four because um, every ambition has a super fight. A super which is fight? Like a, it's like a we sheet style game match. So, the, do you want to know what the super fight is, or do you want? To be honest, I don't think you know who these people are, so it's probably a bit of a anti climax. But um, it's Yuki Ishikawa, not Yuji Ishikawa. Oh, okay. Like Yuki Ishikawa. As I was say, with Yuji Ishikawa, I'm a lot more hype. Um, versus Tyson Ducks. Oh, that sounds interesting. I have no idea who either of those uh, people are. Um, did you watch the Cruiserweight Classic? Uh, no, I didn't. Did you watch the What Culture World Cup? I did not. Okay, they're the only pe- places that know Titan Duck Trumps. <laughs> um, in other news, <laughs> Daniel McCarvey is wearing a different shirt. Oh, it's yellow. I think it you might be a yellow- Borussia Dortmund shirt. Yes. <laughs> Football. <laughs> yes, I I partake in sports. <laughs> and I'm, I'm excited to see Fat Food as an actual grappler. So I'm just dancing to Timothy Thatcher's music. It is. It's a weirdly a bop. It is. And like, I would not expect... I wouldn't expect that from... Yeah, this could be entertaining. It is a so Bruce Dorman type. Tri- oh. <laughs> cool. What is with... Why, why is Daniel McAbey continuously blowing into his hand? Um... Cause I, I am not sure. Right, well, let's count how many times he does it, because that's three times I've seen so maybe, far. Maybe he's trying to get a feeling into it. Maybe he's cold. 
<laughs> it is Canada. It is Canada. Here we go. Is he going to do it again? I can't. I can't quite work out his hair out. What, Mac? Yeah. Listen to Black Parade once in round school. <laughs> Every football fan goes emo eventually. He borrowed this. He borrowed it from a girl who thought um, he thought would like him if he listened to MCF. <laughs> He's very incelly, for lack of a better term. He's very what? Incelly. Incelly? Do tell me what you mean. Do you know what? Do you know what incel is? No. Oh, I don't want to educate you on what incel. <laughs> okay, so I'll do the TLDR. It is a group of pe- of um, men on the internet who hate women because they can't get laid. Right. And like they've been linked to terror activity. <laughs> People who can't get laid have been linked to terror. Okay, yeah, of course. There was a whole um, manifesto done by one guy with the mask. She's, I, let's not get into insults. Okay. <laughs> They're proper, like, worrying. Um, I don't know if you care, but there is <laughs> a brand new giraffe hotel where uh, you can eat dinner with a giraffe in Kent. A giraffe hotel. Yeah, yeah, it's a real thing. Google it. Not right now. We're watching uh, <laughs> Maccabee versus versus Thatcher, but but it's funny because in the run up to this, Paul Robinson uh, challenged Walter on progress yet, and like in the run up to this, he was like, um, "Oh, I I've knocked out men half um, double your size, Walter. Do you really think I'm scared of you?" And I saw like a smaller man can like beat. A bigger man, but like I'm still trying to figure out in my head what makes it believable and not believable. In my head, I'm trying to work out who the fuck is twice the size of Walter. He was being, as you point out, Paul Robinson's like five foot four, so like he doesn't have a great sense of scale. Oh, okay. Like if, you probably can't see Walter's head from where he is. <laughs> Do but um, you'll know this because we're you're like an inch taller than me, so we're roughly the same height. Um, every time someone's smaller than you in a crowded situation, you keep losing them. <laughs> like, I was walking with my... A couple of years ago, I was walking with my girlfriend another time through Edinburgh, like through um, Cross Bridges down to Princess Street, and I was like, okay, we're in a rush here, so I'm just gonna... Let's just go. And then I looked behind me, <laughs> she was catching up with me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh no. Uh, it's it's a tall person problem. Oh, no, he's rolled with it. It is a tall person problem. We we have to constantly make up for the deficiencies of the shots. <laughs> um, I'm going to say something that is going to ruin the rest of this match for you. Ooh, tasty knee bar. Um, that is Timothy Thatcher's trunks. Um, the Thatcher that is written on his trunks is not level, and it has been fucking me off for the entire match. So. I've been with Thatcher for years. I've, I've noticed this. It fucking annoys me. Why is it not level? Thatcher? Look at it. Look at it. Why are the C and H so much fucking higher? Um. <laughs> because. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Ooh. Oh, oh shit. My God. He's doing... Daniel. He's doing the coke now. Daniel, he's doing the Kotorabushi cell. <laughs> the cocaine knows this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bye, Daniel. Oh, no, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit, shit. <laughs> can't get to it. Ah! Oh, no, he can't get it. So he just, I love that. I can't get this submission. So let's just go into this submission. But he doesn't want to go into that submission because it leaves him more prone. I, I like that. I like the psychology happening here. I'm a fan of Daniel Maccabee's top. <laughs> oh, so now you're into the top. I like Brucey Dortmund. I, d- I don't know what any of this is. It's a German football team based in Dortmund. Oh. Oh, that's where the XW is based. Hey! It all It all, comes it all back fits around. now. Oh, that kick. 
Although, I imagine, why do I imagine he wasn't going to go through? And then he was like, but come on, I brought two, I brought two tops. <laughs> Daniel, how many tops have you brought with you? Three. Oh, fuck, he's going to the final, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> you reckon that's, he brought four because he thought he was going to the final of, uh, of 16 cow. And then it's like, shit, we'll put you in the first round and then we'll have your win ambition. <laughs> Because they also changed trunks. Yeah, well, they got matches top, haven't they? Fucking hell. Just just a cheeky gut wrench oh. suplex. That was lovely, though. Beat him into submission. Oh, he's going to go for the... Oh, um, no, the choke. That's oh, no, no, has he got it in? Sort of? No, not quite? No. Maybe? You know what, though? This is lovely. Yeah, it's not bad. Armbar. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's cinched in, though. Cinched in like bollocks. Oh, <laughs> very nice. What do you do with your bollocks? Cinch them in. <laughs> <laughs> you J for me in between us. <laughs> or do you put your balls in? Yeah, yeah, you do put Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. <laughs> that was a very, very nice exchange. Very nice. That was... This is lovely. I, I wish um, that... Um, Suzuki would do more like this because he's been going more into his brawling, especially recently in like his Moxley match. I kind of wish he'd do more of this. Oh, another Insiguri. Oh, no. Nope, he's... Blocked. Single leg well, Boston. The Insiguri leaves... leaves you prone. So, like, <laughs> quite frankly, Thatcher should have seen that coming. He should. Have we seen any of the Thatcher versus Riddle matches in this year? I haven't. Oh, no. I'd recommend that. I'd recommend them both. Both of, both of them probably my NXT matches of the year. Okay. But, like, I haven't thought massively of the NXT formula in the last... This is, this is great. This is a really entertaining right. match. I'm kind of glad I waited until this year to see this, because this is actually really... This is the kind of thing I fucking dig. I dig a lot of things. They also, it also includes like old men beating the shit out of people. <laughs> oh, don't good. It's not often you see drop kicks in a UFC style fight, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that was no, an excellent but, sell know. from McAvey then. <laughs> Just... This isn't UFC. Timothy Thatcher's a better fighter. Although I recently found out, I didn't actually know this. Um, you know, Shiri and Startup. She uh, fought UFC She's Japan, fought... yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> Slappity, oh. slappity, Oof. slappity. Oh. oh, fucking hell, he's dead. Oh, the knockout. I'm sure it's supposed to be a 10 count. I think it's part of referee's discretion. He doesn't look overly impressed, does he? Who? Oh, dear. Macab- oh, Daniel McAbee. Well, to be fair, he just got... <laughs> Just got KO. He and he's got another football shirt yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, please, he's just going to fucking Jim Small and it's like, please, for the love of God, put me out <laughs> have another shirt. You know what, though? Like, I would have legitimately give that an eight. That was yeah, it was great. a great match. I enjoyed that. Oh, he's even selling it after the match. These are great cameras. I need to... Um, if you have time, check out there. If you want more facts, yeah, check out there. But then again, if you're, you're more likely to watch NXT, so basically just go back and watch the other matches because they are better. But... Oh, sorry, Dan. Is it just me or is it weird seeing crowds <laughs> considering where, what time we are recording this? Yeah, a little bit. I can't because I went up. To, I actually went up to Adam for the first time since lockdown um, on Wednesday yesterday, and it was so weird. I'm like, I did not realize how overwhelming the city would be after five, six months in lockdown. Busy was it? Um, it wasn't. It wasn't even that busy. It's just the scale of it. I live in a town. I like. I had my first McDonald's. Well, first McDonald's in what five, six what months. What did you have? Um, a double cross pounder with bacon. Oh, lovely. I also went to see about Tenet. 
The what? That Tenet, that the only film that's in the cinema right now. It's the new Christopher Nolan film. Oh, uh, okay. Any good? Um, really well directed. The story was kind of hard to follow. Oh, okay. So basically... It was a Christopher Nolan Nolan. film. (laughs) Like, the only movies he's directed that are easy to follow are fucking Dark Knights. Yeah. (laughs) We have seen one Red Death match, but you know what? I'm hyped for this. Do you know what? That Thatcher versus Maccabay match has got me proper in the mid... Is he dancing to Walter's theme tune? (laughs) He's much. He was. Oh, I... This is a great shot. Walter's like, I've literally just had a break. The fuck is this? Anyway, what were you going to say? I can't fucking remember. Sit down, Everyone tall man with a hat. Patch <laughs> it's a one-piece hat. He's part of a straw hat. <laughs> Do, 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 do. so do you reckon the progress show was on straight the, after this um I could not tell you I think it was sort of like a weekend pass kind of thing oh, okay so it was like this would be like the day show or the night or the like after party show because like smash were doing stuff at the same time oops mm. That's how you take down a big man. Go after the arm, because he's also going to chop you with that arm, probably. But again, he didn't really chop that last match. Oh. Oop. There we go, into the armbar. Imagine if he submitted now. Does that mean that Red Death well, should have had a championship opportunity at the NXT UK Championship? To be completely fair, no, because it's under a different rule set. Uh, you can't... You can't... Um, if it's like a then again, oh. Tony Winelki. That was such a fuck you. Oh. Yeah, Walter's like, <laughs> no, this is my promotion. I'm done playing now, fucker. You can't tell it here because we're basically using the, pro- that's the progress set of there, like that um, lighting grid. But um, the WXW production value when we're in Germany is actually really fucking high. Hmm. Like I'm not being I like um, I think I sent a screenshot when I was watching it, but like it's le- like legitimately a more impressive set than um, the NXU um, takeovers. Okay. Well, the UK takeovers. Yeah. Oof. Oofed. I'm just gonna put my phone right. on charge, Chris. Uh, keep yourself entertained. I'll be literally eight seconds. Okay. Uh, oh, power bomb! Shit! Shit! Oh, that's great. Oh man, well I d- I don't know why Rob didn't. Oh, and Walter's won. Rob's missed it. The, the, the cunt, but well, of course that would fucking happen, wouldn't it? When I left, <sighs> <laughs> I, d- I did see it. My charger's just down there. I just couldn't reach it with my headphones on. Uh, that power bomb looked fun to take. Yeah, power bomb into right into a Boston crab. That was quick. It was. Um, I don't. I yeah. don't even think that went two minutes. I should point out the super fights are there, basically, so you don't need to wrestle right after you've wrestled. Oh, okay, so the super fight is next, and then the final between Walter yeah. and Timothy Thatcher. Yeah, um, so it's Ishikawa versus Tyson Dukes. Tyson Dukes. Oh, um, Ishikawa, apparently, I haven't seen it yet, yeah, had a really good match uh, ambish- in the super fight at Ambition 12. Okay, well, that's helpful, because uh, Ren Banks... Tyson oh, Ducks. Ben Banks had yeah, the Pillars of Canadian Wrestling, so who the fuck cares? Is it the Pillars of Canadian... Who's Sebastian Suave? I don't know, but um, Ren Banks, I saw him at the Progress Show in Newcastle, and he's really good. Well, I must admit, he's in very good shape. Yeah, fucking William McGill over here. Yeah, I mean, a few dodgy tattoos, but who doesn't have dodgy tattoos? Okay, Yuki Shikawa at this point is 52 years old. I'm trying to see where he was famous for. Well. Hang on. He's wrestled in New Japan. Big Japan. Old Japan. If he's done Noah, as, as that's amazing. Has he done Noah? He has... 
NWA. He's done NWA. Who hasn't? He has not done. He has not done no. Uh, He's done all Japan this year, I should say. When oh, I've seen this one. I think so. Very apocalyptic entrance theme. I love it. Oh, um, he's from Battle Arts. Battle Arts, that's it. Um, he's only ever held, held one championship in his whole career, though. Was it the 24 7 championship? The N- no, it's the NWA Intercontinental Tag Team Championship. Fucking hell, how long has he been pissing wrestling? Um, since. The dawn I, of I time. <laughs> I'm I'm not uh, gonna lie, Chris. He looks very frail getting into the ring. Um. Yeah. Oh, he was in. By the way, he was in a tag match in 992. He started. Um. He he has like um. He has la- he has less than ten matches a year since 2013. Which, to be fair, makes perfect That's sense. Cool. He's never had more than a hundred matches a year in his career. Again. He looks like a good slap might break him. But to be fair, you would also think about if you looked at Yuji Nagata. True. Or Janakiyama, and he's still dropping people on their fucking heads. <laughs> Tyson Ducks is a bit like... I'm not sure. Sh- <laughs> where, where are you going? Where are you going, Ishikawa? Well, like, you can't... You can't get leverage on him when he's on the floor, so he's just he's rolling for leg locks. Stop rolling, you see. You just kick him in the head. Um He was in a tag match. Um who was Fatch's partner against Walter and some other old Japanese dudes. I'm gonna come check it because it's in my match of the year, Fred. And that was really good. Um I gave it um a high eight. I've now started di- differentiating high eights from low eights just so I can. Um, January, August match. It w- it was him and um, Timmy Fatsu and Ishikawa versus Walter and Akira. Okay. I take back my previous concerns about the old man. <laughs> he seems to be fine. I was about to say, he did take a Walter Chap a chop just this year. So. Oh my god! Took a Walter Chop and won the match. Did he pin Walter? No, no, of course he fucking did. He did put him in a Fujiwara. Ooh. So is there only is Walter there only this in the final left? DL. What you have to realise is the final is Fatcher versus Walter. I know. I'm excited. <sighs> that's that's What's the brilliant. Like? It's the girl in the front row and the guy in the second row chewing gum. What's the matter with that? Like on the hard cam. Oh, is the, it putting the, you off? Just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the girl, to be fair. <laughs> and the guy Jack Noah just behind yeah. her. <laughs> oh. I love shit. I love... I, I like wrestling moves where you roll people over. <laughs> Never let it be said, but I'm hard to please. <laughs> I love wrestling matches where they get rolled over. Sensational wrestling no, think, journalism. I was thinking about it because, like, over the last three days, I've been watching like a match from Slammiversary every like I'll come back to a match every few hours just so I can get through it. Yeah, and like nothing, nothing overly blew, blew me away. But I was realizing like the last, that last match was like a massive spot fest, and I thought it was okay. I thought it was like a seven out of ten. Yeah, and then I was like, I prefer the Diana Parada match because she because she puts um, Grace into a really nice Fujiwara. <laughs> Would you give that a seven as well? And I'm like, um, I gave that a seven as well. Yeah, like basically, that both of you got a seven, everyone else got a six. Apart from that knockout match, which was fucking awful. I know. I kind of wish. Um, 
other promotions had like shoot style side tournaments. You mean like the Brawl for All? No, no, because that was like an actual shoot. I mean, you don't get much more shoot than the fucking Brawl for All, mate. Yeah, because it, it's a shoot. <laughs> but like stuff like um, this or just um, Josh Barnett's Bloodsport, if you want to be smart about it, EWF and EWFI. Pinfall. Oh. I think that's why I liked um, the Liger versus Suzuki match more than you did. Not that you didn't like it, I just liked it a lot more. The one from King of Pro uh, Wrestling? Yeah. I didn't hate it at all. I thought it was a really good match. I know you didn't hate it, but I fucking loved it. And I think it's because like Liger and Suzuki were rolling for leg locks, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's my kind of shit. You know what's weird? Well, those are objectively like longer shorts than what the old man is wearing. The shorts and Tyson Ducks look much smaller. They do. They do. It's probably because he's not I'm putting a knee with him wearing knee pads. Why do they look so much smaller? Why would you not wear knee pads? Um, I think it's a grappling thing. I like I think Tyson Ducks normally wears knee pads, but because they're like doing like grappling but oh, not. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't, I've only seen Tyson. I've literally only seen Tyson Ducks in the What Culture World Cup and um, the Cruiserweight Classic, and I can't remember much about him. So, but to be fair, it's not doing awfully. No, it's, it's it's all right. Considering the man's fifty something years old, I think Super Fight's a bit strong. I think it's literally just what we use for non-tournament match. Slapty. But we have to realize that like, Tyson Ducks in Canada is like a local hero. Well, not a local hero, but like um, local darling, I should yes. say. Sort of like how like the Kings of Cats are really big up, up here in Scotland, but like you probably don't care beyond when I tell you to watch Kings of, <laughs> Kings of Cats matches. And just dismiss it entirely. Yeah, exactly. Although um, Chris Rantry once attacked them and called them discount, um, de- um, Tesco discount Young Bucks. Is he wrong? Um, yes, because Lewis Gerben can sell. Oh, <gasps> we've got, oh, yes. We're going we're gonna to get some Shabbat shit right here. Oh, I thought we were just going to leather the shit out of each other. Nope. Uh, so, so. I, I am ultimately disappointed. It's still quite impressive. Yeah. I, I love these smooth transitions. Oof. <laughs> don't, don't hurt the old What's man. What's that? Oof. <laughs> that was a very sensual oh, oof. Oof. I'm going to look on, on um, Ishikawa's match guide and cage match to see what good matches he's had. <laughs> <laughs> There's one page of, uh, of it. So. Um, oh, there's some Thatcher matches which I'm sure are really good there's only one here but two no three here but scoring more than 8 out of 10 and I don't know how people Antonio Honda's had a good match with him what? Antonio Honda he's the guy who did you remember that thousand slap match that we were telling you about in DDT oh yeah what's the case from that? <laughs> Because you're honest, Rob, it's between this and Luke Underground, and I wanted Gas to be here when we covered Luke Underground because I know he lost Pentagon. Yeah, no, I get that. Also, I'm still trying to figure out where to find good footage from Luke Underground, but it doesn't have a pop up when you press play. Because it's not fucking on anything. <laughs> like, if it was on like an Amazon thing, I'd like set up a dummy Amazon account and take out the free trial of the channel, but like... I'm sure it used to be on iTunes. It's just not on. Yeah, but I'm not buying it. <laughs> Fuck that. Oh, but it's funny, because I was t- I met Matt, Matt Stryker at a walk culture show, and like, he was lovely, like, he's the only guy who didn't charge photos, he didn't have any money, he was just like, okay, I'm just going to go out and talk to the fans, so I talked to him for, for a few minutes, because everyone was like, Take pictures with Moose and Cole, so I um, me and the guy I was with just talked to him, and we talked. Uh, who the guy was like, "Oh, so what have you been doing?" I'm like, "Oh, he's been doing things underground," and he was like, "Yeah, I have." I'm like, 
He, and he was like, oh, where did we see that? And he's like, you're in the UK, just use daily motions. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I of, yeah, you can't watch it legally here, so just buy it. Yeah. I bet you can find a bit torrent of it somewhere. Um, I I can do. I, I every time I've used a torrent, I've bricked my computer, so I, I just don't trust myself to do it. Anymore. Yeah, fair enough. If someone's going to torrent it, we'll get Garth to do it. I mean, he can email us the files. <laughs> we trust Garth. The last thing was, um, I'd want to cover Ultima Lucha, which is like two hours on its own, but um, it's between two episodes, so you'd have to switch between the two episodes. You can now see my dilemma. I kind of just want the old man to win a bit to go on to Walter vs. Faction. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, we haven't had a single Walter chop yet. I imagine Thatcher is going to take quite a few of them, let's be honest. This this is going on a I bit think, too long um, now. Yeah, like, I think the best thing the other matches had was like quick quickness like for a brief mm, definitely like the longest match we've had in the tournament is like Maccabee versus Thatcher oh my god can someone just win already <laughs> oh, is- right where the arm I'm starting to feel like this the way I feel about UFC fights that go to a draw. I'm like, can someone just win them? Come on, Tyler Rex. Just Barnett looks like if Liam Thompson and... No, uh, no. Tyson Dirk looks like if Liam Thompson and Josh Barnett had a baby. He does. A very... And again, you look a bit like a skinnier um, Josh Barnett. Do I? I always think I look like a. a I always thought I just like a bin bag full of play doh. <laughs> you like give Tom the lunch and Josh Barnett had a baby. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Actually, not to Mark. The bassist or the guitarist? Yeah, but more Um, I know. No, I know the difference between the two, and just trying to decide which one oh, you look okay. more like. <laughs> Oh my god. Cold skull! Skull end! Does he lock it in better than Sonata? How dare you do this in front of um, Tatsumi Fujita? He's embarrassed. The greatest. Tell you what, though, we're very lucky that Garth is in here. He would hate this. Garth would just be laughing at Oven. No, it's not just that. He'd be laughing at Oven neck beards in the front row. Yes, he would. How are we not like, finished really yet? Pro- finished yet? Finished yet? Roll into an ankle lock. <laughs> we're still not fucking done. Why are we waiting? <laughs> Walter's masturbating. This is, the, this is the sort of high quality stuff you tune in for, guys. To be fair, if you come into our podcast by now expecting massive analysis into legs, limb psychology, you're half right, but we try. But obviously, <laughs> Podmania, we try really hard. You guys. <laughs> Riff! Riff! Oh, something good? Nope. Oh. Ooh, that was smooth. No, twist his nipple. What? <laughs> no, twist his nipple. <laughs> Here's the thing. You know how there's no disqualifications? Yeah. In a in a real fight, like I I don't fight very often. I don't. <laughs> I that. don't fight very uh, often. I I don't sound like that. Um, I would. I, I would just hoof the balls and run. But, like, that would be my fight technique. Hoofing the balls and... You are aware you can't hoof people in the balls in the UFC. It's, like, one of the few rules. Yeah, but this has no rules. Well, there is. There's at least one rule, because you're not only... Like, rope breaks are still on. Someone's yeah, forgot uh, to go into settings and turn them off. 
did he see me come A versus uh, Machoke? I can't say his name. Machoke, the Scandinavian lads fight. <laughs> no. If he's Scandinavian, he won't be Russian. The European lads fight. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, both of them hooked each other in the balls by accident. <laughs> like, independently of each other. <laughs> and then both of them individually who, um, poked each other them in the eye. It's like, you two are multiple-time champions. How the fuck are you making such basic bitch mistakes? <laughs> ah, he's won. Nah, finally. Ishikawa's won. That was, um... Long. It was. It was... I'm going to check off. How long did that go? I bet that only went ten minutes. Right, for, um, clarity... Not clarity. I'm using that word wrong for um, reference. <laughs> the um, Thatcher versus Macadam. We no one put the times. Facts. That's very useful. Oh, we're gonna hug it out. Aww. There's nothing worse than a sweaty old man <laughs> hugging you. <laughs> That's right. Uh, did, uh, have you ever watched New Girl? Yes. Um, you know that episode where um oh Christ, I forgot his name, the really cynical guy. Nick. Nick, yeah, where he found finds a Japanese guy who takes him to a film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here we go. Finals. Walter but, uh, versus Thatcher. That's tasty. It is. I've only seen I've seen two other Thatcher versus Walter match. One was in Bowler. And one was in progress. One in progress was so much better. Oh my god. <laughs> you remember when, because um, we were at the NXT TakeOver where Walter debuted? Yes. And remember when he came and Garth was like, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone in the place is going fucking nuts. And it's like, who the fuck is oh, that? That was fucking banging, that was. It was. Like, uh, most takeover crowds, I don't, uh, the best crowds I've ever been in. Because, like, they, it's weird for British, uh, those British takeover crowds, because, like, they were chanty, but they weren't smarty about no. it. Like, we cheered the faces, booed the, well, apart from me, because I was rooting for coffee bowls. <laughs> so. I, I regret that in hands. <laughs> I'd be terrified if I was in the front row when if Walter did that. But again, I was in the front row um, in ICW. You know how they run like very tight um, nightclub? Yeah. Was that one in Edinburgh at a place called um, I forget what it's called, but it's just across from TV. And this is going to be nothing to you. Um, and um, really tight, like no room. And Moose was in the main event every time he went against the ropes. I'm like, oh fuck. Also, tip to any promoter if you have moves, put them in the main event because FYT is going to ruin the rest of your show. <laughs> moose. Moose! Yeah, just that moose thing, it does ruin the rest of the show. It's like a yes chant or a pretend chant. It just, if that's in your opener, it's going to ruin the rest of your show. This is good timing because I'm on to my last cold one, but I've also lost my ball opener. Fuck. Opening a cold one with the lads. Oh, I found the ball open. Opening a cold one with the boys. Boys! Uh, <coughs> got it. I got it open. So who are you rooting for? Uh, I'm always gonna I'm always gonna root for Big Daddy Walt. Otherwise he might Well yeah, you. exactly. Big Walter White. Uh, you what, you're gonna call me a smart, but I think I prefer Thatcher. You're right, you are a smart. I mean, like, I am, but we're both, we're watching WXW on a Thursday night, right? WXW on a Thursday night, watching Thatcher and Walter. One of us has work tomorrow, and it's not me. I don't have work tomorrow, I'm on holiday still. I? Yeah, some school doesn't start until next week. Oh, the schools are back here. I keep forgetting Scotland and England are different. It's because we're not, basically, we own your ass. (laughs) <laughs> I, was gonna, 
I was saying we we have different term times, Robert. I don't know why you bothered to go. Oh, we're imperialists. <laughs> oh, perhaps it's getting desperate about going for well, it was a fairly ill-advised um, leg roll. Do 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 do. I bet you if Thatcher had that theme song. Um, but again, that also, I saw Thatcher with Joe Hendrick at Discovery. Joe Hendrick. And they, were, they put that on right before the... No, they didn't. Cause, you know, they, put, they had that. And then, you know, after it, Sugar Duncanton versus um, Gene Money in a zombie lumberjack match. God. <laughs> no, seriously. We, we gathered on each side and then the zombie take the last one. It's like... Um, Brown meat is tastier, but white meat has more protein. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's on. I'd say go watch it, but it's, ha- it's half an hour long, and really, I only liked it because it was very long. I'm surprised of other places Fatsha could go, like to do well and earn his money that he picks um, NXT. He's not a very NXT style person, um, and I did think this no. when he signed. But you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna judge him because he's clearly made for like right now at the very least he's made a great choice. He... But I'm also thinking like, where would I place him? Like, where would I want him? Like, not just in like a dream match sense. Cause, like, because of course I want to see Thatcher versus well, really a Thatcher versus Suzuki happened in OTT. Look, like, of course, I want to see like Thatcher versus Shingo, Fat, um, Thatcher versus. I just want to see Thatcher in a G one, basically. It's what we all want, mate. Oh, like Fat. Oh, like Thatcher and Noah. Like Thatcher seems like someone who would do great in Japan, but also he's not. He's like not the prototypical gaijin. Like Walter is like that Stan Hansen, Terry Gordy, um, Doctor Death yeah. type. Like fat, like fat is one of those one of one talents. Like I'm not sure. Like you can draw parallels, but like there's no one like him right yeah. now. So I guess that makes him an asset. Oh, that was a lovely kick. So I guess that makes him an asset wherever he goes. Whereas like Walter, there's plenty of people like Walter. He's just the best at best at it. I sp- you know, do you know what? Walter Sharp's going to probably... Oh, my Fuck God. Fucking hellfire. Like, the other matches, they were shooting for submissions, and this one, they're shooting for a knockout. Killed. Oh, Fatch is not happy about that. You no know one Fatch was a Volv champion. I'd, like, his first time I ever heard of Fatch, but, like, I never checked out his matches. I was seeing people calling him boring. I think that's unfair. I think that's... I hate saying this in wrestling. Well, if you think that's people not guessing it. Like, because to, to when you think of other people in the world, it's like Johnny Gargano, Ricochet, um, Keith Lee, like these gifable people. Mm. And Thatcher, as much as I love him, he's not gifable. No. No, he's certainly his not. Stuff works, his stuff works in the context of its match. Up, that her up. I like that. It gets a full mount, and then it's like, no, get off. <laughs> it's like, no, it's a full mount. Let him knock out. <laughs> Do you not know what we want? Yes, I want to see. Because <laughs> I stuck my neck out and said, "Factory here." There we go. Up, have you looked at the result? Why would you start a slap oh, fight? Well, he hasn't chopped yet. He still hasn't chopped, but those clubs, oh my god, oh my god, that's a knockout. That has to be a knockout. Dun dun, Thatcher! Have you these two work as a team? I haven't. I know that obviously they're both part of, um, like, say, um, Ring Camp. Ring Camp. Um,. So the most, it was them, um, the current Marcel Bartel, and well, it was them, well, and the current Marcel Bartel for most of Ring Camp history. Well, for like for the most prominent part of Ring Camp history, like where they were expanding elsewhere. 
Um, if you want recommendations, I can recommend they had a match in PWG against Elia Dragunov and Shingo. Okay. Which, of course, is great. Shingo was in it. And also, um, the three of them, so Thatcher, Bartel, and Walter versus British Strong Style. Fair enough. It's weird do, do, seeing Walter with branded Adidas um, shoes. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> oh! You think it, why, is he wearing, why do you reckon he's not wearing his boots? You think it's to make him more agile? Because I've never seen this. I'm not. This is going to sound weird, but I've never seen this much of Walter's legs. That's a really peculiar thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Triangle, triangle, triangle. Thatcher, Thatcher. I, I never thought of a Scottish person I'd ever be chanting that. <laughs> uh, uh, I am a fan of that. Well done. And that, when I was going to see, when I was going to see him at the end, it was like the end of twenty eighteen, I think. And um, my dad, like trying half heartedly, trying to. Uh, pretend he cares about this wrestling bullshit. It was like, oh, so who's on the card? Because like he recognizes some names, and I was like, oh, um, Thatcher. And he was like, and he was like, bitch. I'm like, no. <laughs> is, that just a reflex, is that just a reflex? Do you have um, Thatcher's dead parties down in Stoke? Um, in Stoke? No. Well, well. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, not not as such. No. Oh. Um, we, I, I went to like three or four, <laughs> and I say when I say I went to three or four, we were family outings. <laughs> oh, minus buffering, fuck it. <laughs> minus buffering, where is we start a strike exchange? No. Well, Thatcher is now in an armbar, a big armbar. He's got really orange tongue. Walters somersaulted out of it. Big fucking boots. Oh, big, a big armbar. Power bomb. Oh no, this is No. Oh, it started again. I'm gonna be like ten seconds well twenty thirties. Ooh, that is a nice food you are. Our commentary is now so muddy. So remember how fat you got his teeth knocked out in the fight pit? Yes. People were believing that was real. <laughs> And I'm like, you fucking man. And I remember someone going, it's not one of the best. Because I think it's like top 10, maybe. Top, maybe top 10 matches of the year. And someone was like, well, like, he didn't actually get his te- He got his teeth knocked out, so it's not that good. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You did, did you fall for that? I'm going to assume on your... <laughs> we're quite... What, what were you in terms of time? I'm going to ask you to stop. I just want to gauge how far well, behind Walter's just hit a second power bomb, and Timothy Thatcher has just answered the uh, tank out, but has just had his fucking head yeah. taken off with a clothesline. Uh, well, well, for me, Thatcher um, just got hit with a power bomb. So if I hit forward 10, we should be remotely caught up. And but there we go. Again. I didn't... Oh, I don't know who's won. Don't spoil okay. it for me. <laughs> But also, it's not. Oh, here we go. It's moving again. Oh, Walter stalking, stalking his play. Oh, fuck. That. Okay, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's just not moving. That's it. You can see the dent in the. It's like the Roadrunner. Yeah. That, that makes sense. That was an entertaining show. It was. It was a. Much as I've never seen, like, WXW, I, I would have preferred it. If it was like a proper wrestling show, um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not one massively for for shoot wrestling. It's not really why I tune into wrestling. Normal, um, like normal WWE shows are like three hours long, and I know nothing about the Femme Fatale show to fill in the context. To be honest, I think the Femme Fatale show is basically. Um, because that only goes an hour and a half, so I imagine that's like another ambition, but with... But it can't be another ambition, because it just clicks on it, and fucking Session Moth is yeah, on it. Yeah, I can't imagine Session Moth being a shoot-style wrestler, can you really? Ah, uh, okay. Lana Austin's on it. This is explaining why um, the matches aren't going well. 
Well, it's a tournament. It's a tournament. Um, like, anyway, um, but yeah, um, but like, if, even like with the VX with sixteen karat gold, I like I'd have preferred to show you one of them, but also, um, I can't because there's three hours for one chapter. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it was a nice little introduction. There was, you know, there was some good matches. Um, I enjoyed Thatcher and Daniel Maccabe. I really enjoyed the final as well. I thought the super, super showdown, super fight, super... Went on two. The what, sorry? That went on too long. Oh, God, long. yeah. Far, far too long. But all in all, I'm, you know, I'm not I'm not going to complain. All in all, it was, it was good fun to watch. However, Chris... I think we should just begin to wrap up the show. Um, thank you so much for listening along with us, for watching along with us as we ch- checked out WXW Ambition 11. We'll be back, of course, same time next week where it will be Garth's ill-fated decision, which we wait on with bated breath. He has not taken the time to decide what misery he's going to put us through. He's got He's going to tell us a minute. Yeah, he's going to tell us so that we haven't got enough time to bail on him. Is basically what he's going to do. Um, he's. I, I can. He, you underestimate my ability to flake on that. <laughs> to flake on Q. <laughs> um, but again, I like, oh, I have to get a haircut, <laughs> mate. No, you don't. At ten o'clock at night. <laughs> I've seen your hair, mate. You are not getting that cut. I am not getting that cut. It's fucking majestic. Anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Um, please go and check out the podcast. Go and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. We are everywhere. You can go and check us out um, at our website, www.podmania.co.uk. We can check out all our archived episodes. Um, please go and uh, check out our match ratings, features, reviews, all that kind of jazz. You can talk to us on Twitter at, at Podmania, Facebook Podmania Podcasts. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Real Rob Goodwin. You can follow Garth at The Garthberg. Uh, Chris, where can they find you? Oh, fuck, I haven't come up with a funny Twitter handle this week. Ah, Chris loves Piro. That's my actual Twitter handle. I don't use it. I just work. <laughs> that's that's a and weird think, thing to end on. I I also I also sometimes troll the Stardom cast, but then drop Sam <laughs> Um Thank you so much for listening, guys. We'll be back same time, same place next week. You've been listening to the Podmania Pro Wrestling Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Podmania. Facebook at Podmania Podcasts and YouTube and Instagram at Real Podmania. And check out the website podmania.co.uk. Until next time, wrestling fans. Podmania.